This is the sort of inbox most newbies or non-power users to Gmail will have. And this is the sort of inbox that I will be showing you how to create in this video. And by the end, you should know how to have what is called an inbox zero. Hey guys, this is King Ethan. Welcome back to another video. And today I will be discussing why you should adopt inbox zero, then how to implement it, and then how you can use it with your workflow. Timestamps are linked in the video description. Let's get started. First up though, I'd like to acknowledge that I got the whole formula and instructions on how to set up Inbox Zero from Jeff Su. He's a product marketing manager at Google and is also a really good productivity and career tips YouTuber. And I'd encourage you to check him out. The link to his channel is on screen and down in the description. Cheers mate and back to the video. So as a student or working professional, this might be how your inbox in Gmail looks. Familiar? I thought so. We should theoretically be drawn to focus on the unread emails, but as humans we are sometimes drawn to the read emails, the ones that we should have already dealt with and should hopefully forget about. We lose our focus. A study from interruptions.net, linked in the description, shows that it takes about 64 seconds on average to get back on track. So one of the main benefits of having inbox zero is that we are not distracted by old emails as each new email arrives. The distraction could cause you to be less productive or make careless mistakes. The inbox zero method centers in on that all emails you receive fall into three categories. Follow up, emails that you need to take action on. For example, someone needs you to do something. Awaiting reply, Email somebody else, another party, needs to take action on, but you're still the one in charge of the outcome. For example, someone needs to give you data for a report. And the final category, read through later. Emails you might want to read through again because they contain useful information. For example, an industry report. There's two heads up I want to give before the tutorial. First, the demonstration and walkthrough is on Gmail, but you can implement this into most other major email platforms as well, like Outlook or Yahoo. If I find any articles about how to do this for other platforms, I will link them in the description. Otherwise, probably just Google it. I guess everything's on Google these days. And secondly, if you make these changes and come in a few weeks time and you don't like it, you can always reverse the inbox zero method. Don't worry about messing up your mails. But I'm pretty sure you'll really like this method just like I did and not want to switch. All right, so first, head up to your Gmail settings and click see all settings. Then head over to the advanced tab and enable auto advance. Then click save changes. This will reload your Gmail and then we're gonna go straight back into settings, see all settings. And then this time go to the general tab and scroll down to auto advance. Make sure that the go to next newer conversation is selected here. Also, go down to keyboard shortcuts and turn them on. That's it, make sure to save changes. We're now gonna go back into settings for the umpteenth time, but this time you want to go to the labels tab. We're going to create four different labels. The first one we're going to call follow up with a space between follow and up. Click create to make the label. The second we'll call waiting and then click create. The third we'll call read through with a space between read and through. Finally, we'll create a label called calendar. I'll get to explaining this calendar label later. In order for the next steps to work, make sure you're typing the exact same things as I am, basically copying my work. And yes, for this, you can cheat, but don't worry, you can always adjust what I'm doing later on. Now that those four labels are created, the changes are already saved, so you don't need to click save changes or anything like that. Now, just go to the inbox tab here. Now, instead of the default inbox, we want to select multiple inboxes. For the section one search query, we want to type in the letter L colon follow hyphen up. The section name will be action items. Section two will be L colon waiting and the section name will be awaiting reply and then finally section three would be l colon read hyphen through the section name can just be read through later the calendar label will be saved for something later on going down just make the maximum page size 10 the multiple inbox position you want to make that to the right of the inbox importance markers no markers and don't override filters and then 
make sure to click to save changes. I promise you this will all make sense soon. You should be brought back to the main screen. Nothing too major, just three sections have popped up to the right of the inbox. So how does this all work? So we get these emails on a typical workday and the first thing you need to do is go and sort them by their types, starting at the very bottom. The first email, a rickroll report for today. Seems interesting. I might want to use this for later for data, etc. So I will just type B on my keyboard. I know it's weird, but that's for who? That's a bit weird. And then you start typing in read through. Once the option comes up, hit the enter key to apply the label and to archive the email. Don't worry, archived emails are still visible in the all mails tab. Now this email here is an old email from 2019. I can definitely forget about this one. So for this one, we don't even have to label it. If you just directly press E on your keyboard, you can archive that email and move on. And then here's another one, old email from 2016. Oh goodness, huge, that's old. We need to archive that straight away. So again, just go E on your keyboard. Here's an FYI email to keep us in the loop. Often they, people do that, so you know what's going on. So no direct action needs to be taken on this one. So we can just press E again on our keyboard to archive the email. This email here, big project wrap up. It looks pretty interesting. I could use this to help me with future projects or help someone else. So we'll just press V for move. And then we'll type read through and then we'll press enter to archive and then move this to read through. So this is subject line update I don't need to care about. So this email seems to be sent to everyone. So I don't need to directly act on this and it doesn't directly affect me. So I could archive this by pressing E on my keyboard, but here's a pro tip. If you press M to mute this email chain, if people apply all to this email chain, please don't ever reply all, you will not be notified unless it's sent to you directly. So if you press M instead of E here, you can see that it has muted and archived the email. And this is pretty handy. Now we've gone to something that I do need to take action on or I will apparently be in big trouble. So I will press V, follow up, and then hit enter. Now I've applied the follow up label and archived this email. And now there's a mate who needs help with making their inbox just like this. Well, you're in the right place here on this YouTube channel. So I'm happy to help them. We'll press V, follow up, you know the drill. So this is how the inbox looks now. There are zero emails in the inbox part and this is very clean. All of your action items and read through emails have been categorized into their correct categories. To make it look better, you apply some color coding if you click the labels. I like to make follow up red, read through green and waiting for yellow. Another tip, if you go into an email and want to go back to the main inbox screen, you can press G and I on your keyboard at the same time, which stands for go to inbox, and you'll be taken back to the main screen. It also refreshes your emails, and this is pretty cool. Now that your inbox is clean, the idea is that you focus your attention on the action items, the follow-up label. Any free time you have, you can go through to read through emails. You might be wondering why the waiting box is still blank. This is because for waiting emails, these are the ones where somebody else needs to take action, but you're still in charge and responsible for the outcome. For example, you're making a report, but somebody else still needs to send data to you. In this case, say we're writing an email to them asking for data. We can press C to compose an email, write to the person you need, and then you can send the email out. The manual way of doing things is to go to the sent box, find the email, pressing M, waiting, etc, etc, then pressing G and I to go back to the inbox. You'll see that your email will pop up there, so it reminds you to chase up the person if they haven't got the info in a few days or so. But there's a quicker way to do things. If you go back into your settings and then go to filters up in the menu bar, you want to create a new filter. In the to field, you 
you want to type your own email address with a plus sign afterwards and the word waiting at your email domain. With Google, it recognizes your own email regardless of what you put behind the plus sign. You can also have unlimited aliases with this plus sign method, which is quite neat. Then you create the filter and then you want to tick these boxes. A, skip the inbox, archive. B, mark as read. And C, you want to apply the label waiting. Then you click create filter. And now on this page, press G and I to go back to the main inbox. And now when you write that follow up email, maybe they haven't got back to you in the first place, you can add in this filter address, for example, rickastley plus waiting at gmail.com into the blind copy copy field and then send this email. Now you'll see in a couple of seconds your email pop into your waiting inbox and it has automatically been sent to yourself and the label has been automatically applied because it recognized the filter you set up. This is pretty neat. Another cool hack involves calendar invites. Remember the calendar label we set up? We're going to use it now. By default, if you send someone a Google Calendar invite and they accept, you get an email telling you that they have accepted your invite. But do you really need this? You only really need to be sent an email if they decline the invite. So we can filter out these accepted conversations by going into settings, see all settings, and then into filters. Just create a new filter and in the has the words field, you type file name colon invite dot ics and accepted. Then create the filter and tick skip the inbox and mark as read. Then that create that filter. Now you shouldn't be notified when somebody accepts an invite only when they decline. So now we move on on how to apply this to your own inbox. You might have hundreds or thousands of emails and not just 10 to 20 like I have. So my advice to you, go back three or four weeks and then label those emails, archive all the irrelevant ones and label the others with follow up for action emails, waiting for the ones you need to chase others up on and read through for emails you will reference later. And here's the scary part. Select all the other emails in your main inbox and click archive. Don't worry, the archive is not delete. You can still access those emails in your all mail folder that looks like this. So that's a wrap up of the basics of Inbox Zero. There is other stuff you can do with filters and labels, but that is the bare minimum that I use in all of my other email accounts. Let me know in the comments below if that was helpful and if you'd like to see other videos like this. And before we go, I'm going to be launching a newsletter on Substack called Tech Tinkering, where I have instructions on how to maximize your tech workflow along with an accompanying GIF. So if you'd like to subscribe, the link will be in the video description or you can go to kingethan.substack.com to subscribe. I hope to see you there. Otherwise, thanks for watching the video. And if you liked it, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications and hit the like button. I'll catch you in the next one.